collectively the cabinets and not collectively now y'all y'all three are against this uh, particular decision at the Yugadanabi uh, project uh, where there is a, thir a second party the investor from from uh, the United States of America a country that we rarely get any kind of investors uh, coming into this country uh, and we have a, a, a massive fight on, on another level uh, at the UNHRC where they are trying to uh, bring uh, accusation, false accusations, uh, resolutions and everything against our country, against this president, against the prime minister, against our military and that, that is happening. Now here we see a country of that sort is coming to do business with us and the first instance they do a business not just the opposition but parties within the uh, the government are against it. So how does, what exactly is are you shouting against on this particular project and how, what exactly, um, uh, you know, how could that be building investor confidence in the long run? Because right now, if we get an investor from a country or nation where we rarely get from and suddenly he gets so much of, you know, backlash, do you think anyone else would uh, rethink coming into this country and invest? Very pertinent question. Johnny, I must reiterate that we are not against foreign investment or we are not anti-American in that say, in that sense, because we are not against any American investment or any foreign investment. I have no issue with giving 40% of Yugadanavi to uh, New Fortress Energy. It would have been better if there was an auction, then we may have obtained higher price. Uh, but we are raising four other issues. We should bring US investors to the country, but not at the cost of good governance, not at the cost of losing our uh, friends in the international community, not uh, at the cost of jeopardizing our national security and energy security, not, that, not at the cost of uh, losing our one and only hope of mining oil and gas in Manar Basin. Those are the four reasons for us to uh, mark our protest to this deal. Why, why is that? Because what's, what's so oh, let me take all the, those uh, Let me take the four, right? There was a tender floated by the CEB to construct a gas pipeline and to station a FSRU. You know FSRU stands for floating storage and regasification uh, unit. So there was a tender. In the end, this tender was secured by uh, Pakistan Chinese joint venture. Right? So they have followed the proper tender procedure and secured the bid. They have invested in uh, documents, uh, hiring experts to analyze our documents. This uh, tender proce process was very complex one, a highly technical uh, process. Then with bonds, performance bonds, everything has been placed and all of a sudden, Sri Lankan government has offered the very same project to a company which has not participated in that uh, tender process. Then, this is happening first time in our uh, history. So then, how can investors rely on Sri Lankan tender procedure? Sri Lankan government and Sri Lanka as a whole, because a uh, good corporate body will always rely on the systems instead of people. As long as Johnny is there, I am secured. I should not think in that manner. You may be here, you may not be here. But there must be a proper system to facilitate any foreign investor, whoever is in the power, whoever who holds the key office in the government. That's the first issue that we raise. Second one is of course diplomatic issue. Now see, earlier Japan, South Korea and India expressed their interest in this project. Government said, no, uh, we can't give you, we will have a tender procedure. Otherwise, one of these governments would have secured yeah, this okay. project. After, tender pro after following the tender pro pro procedure, China and Pakistan jointly secured this project. Now, these five countries have been helping us throughout the recent past. In contrast, the USA has been harassing us uh, during the last 20-30 years. In this backdrop, what have we done? We have rejected all our friends and facilitated the, the enemy.